Hi, welcome back again. I'm Sarah, if you're just joining us, and today we're going to open the violin case, and I'm going to explain to you the different parts of the violin and the bow and how to care for them. So let's get started. So first, make sure your case has the right side up. Don't let it be on the other side, or when you open the case, the violin will be on the front side down, which is not good. So you open the case, the stick here, those are going to be in the top part. We have a strap, you're going to undo the strap, and this is the violin. So try to always hold it so we already know the neck. This whole constructed part right here is called the body of the violin, and on the body we have the top plate, okay? We have the back, and we have the sides, which are called the ribs. Here, just like on a person, we call them shoulders. So we have a neck, we have shoulders. We have many of the same parts we have in the human body. We have the F holes. You can see here in the shape of the Fs, which besides being a very beautiful touch to the instrument, serve the function of giving the plate a little bit of flexibility and allowing for the sound to come out, move, move the air out of the instrument. Inside the instrument, which you cannot see, is a little dowel standing up, which is called the sound post, which is very important. The Italians call it the sole of the violin. So this is the chin rest, which is where your chin will be going eventually when we have the violin up, like so. Then we have the four strings. So from lowest, we have G, D, A, and E. Okay? So G, D, A, and E. So then we have the bridge. Just like the bridge that you walk on, it's supporting the strings and holding them up at a certain height. And then up here, to tune the strings, to change the pitch, like something like that, we have the pegs up here, okay? And I advise you, if you are a beginner violinist, Please do not touch the pegs. Please let a teacher do it or someone who already knows how to tune very carefully. Um, then down here, we also have what we call a fine tuner, which can also change the pitch, but at a smaller increment, hence the name fine tuner. Okay, these are called F holes because they look like Fs, or this one looks like an F and this one looks like the reverse, okay? And it helps the sound come out, also gives some flexibility to the plates. Attached to the neck, which we already know, is called the fingerboard, this black piece of ebony, okay? And when we're pressing down on the strings, it's just at the right angle and height to allow us to play very easily. Then the strings go up, wrap around pegs, which we use to tune. One, two, three, four pegs, okay? Here, the spiral, is called the scroll. And again, it's just a nice signature of whoever made the instrument to show their craftsman, craftsmanship. And here, if we follow our eye down the strings again, we have sometimes what we call a fine tuner, which again does change the pitch of the instrument, like the peg, but just at a smaller increment. Uh, and if you are a beginning learner of the violin, I highly recommend that you do not, do not try to touch the pegs turn those or here until you're really confident that you can do that. So until then, I would recommend having a teacher or a musician help you tune your instrument, uh, or at least help you tune using an app that you could get. Again, if you allow your eye to go down past the end of the strings, we have what we call the tail piece. So just to review the basic parts, we have the body of the instrument, top, back, and ribs or sides, F holes, Strings, G, D, A, E, bridge, neck and fingerboard, pegs, scroll, sound post inside, chin rest, okay, and a button or tail gut, okay? So those are the basic parts. So when you're putting the violin back into the case, make sure that you securely fasten the strap that's there, usually made of Velcro, 
If you don't, and you lift the case, the violin inside can kind of tumble around, which is not really safe. So make sure that's securely in place. Next, let's move on to the bow. So you remove the bow from the case. We have the stick, which is a graceful, long piece of specific wood. We have the hair of the bow, which is actually made of horse hair. Don't worry, no horses died in the making of the bow. Very important to know, we have the frog versus the tip of the bow when playing music. Uh, we have the end adjuster. We have a thumb grip here, which basically protects the stick from our gripping it of repeated use. Uh, we have a wrapping here. After you take the bow out of the case, you're going to need to turn the adjuster on the bottom clockwise to tighten it, okay? And loosen it a few turns, just enough so the hair is not tight in tension, okay? Make sure the bow stick is above the hair, not this way, okay? Otherwise, over time, the weight will stretch the hair out. So just remember, stick on top. Carefully put it in. Turn the adjuster, if you haven't already. Invest in a cloth or a light piece of cotton so you can always wipe down your violin anywhere you touched it, from the oil in your hand or from the rosin on the strings. This is also a great time for me to tell you, for next time, since we will be playing the violin, so make sure for next time that you either have a shoulder rest like so, or a sponge and two rubber bands that will eventually, and I'll show you again next time, will go on the back of your instrument. So it will go like so, and you can put it up to your neck and it will help support it so it doesn't fall this way, okay? Also for next time, make sure you have an in-tune violin. So again, if you don't know how to tune the violin yet, um, have someone who knows definitely help you. And make sure everything's tucked away. Nothing's gonna poke the instrument when you close the case. And voila, that's it. And I hope to see you again next time. Please like our page and subscribe to our channel. And I'm really excited to see you because next time we will be actually playing the violin. It's gonna be great. Bye.